to me. Let's fix them up. Making this bad boy fully operational. It's scrubbing time. Patience is the key. It's getting there, making it shinier by every second. Let's bring in the heavy Let's grease up the MB with some isopropyl. Using tops makes the process a hell of a lot easier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Howdy guys, it's me with a normal voice, and now I'm going to play this one, Russian Attack. That was first released as Green Beret. My favorite game for the C64, yep. But this one was released in 87, approximately two years after its original release on the arcade. The very first time I came in contact with this game was in the same year, in 87, when I bought a Konami Coin Up Hits compilation. I still have it. Got it here, somewhere in the room, not in this room, but in another room, inside a box. So, in this compilation I got, there were, if I remember this correctly, many other good titles, Konami titles, such as Hypersports, played that a lot. Mickey, Mickey it's a fun game, if you haven't heard it, your goal is to hit on as many skills as you can in a school environment and you have to uh, evade the headmaster or the teacher I believe it was a teacher who's throwing his mouth fake teeth uh, tars you and you can have to evade other people as well other teachers and yeah and so on and then I remember GR Kung Fu of course as well you could uh, actually um, foot stomp all your way through the whole game and finish it only by foot stomping your opponents. <laughs> that was hilarious, but it was a very, very fun game. One of the first fighting games I really, really enjoyed. And so, about this game, what they did back in the day to attract the American and European market Nintendo, they decided to market the game with a different name than Green Beret and instead go with Russian Attack. As it seemed to be a more appropriate name to go with at just yeah at that time, which was during the Cold Wars. They often did that to many of their titles. And about this game, uh, the player's objective in this particular version was changed from rescuing prisoners to destroy, instead destroy a secret weapon. 
Yeah. Additionally, uh, they included a two-player co-op mode uh, as well, allowing two players to play at the same time. It works exactly the same as as you were playing uh, with one one player. Uh, you couldn't interact with the other player; you just played as as of now. And uh, hmm, let's see here. The game it's essentially identical to the arcade version. However, 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 the flamethrower. You haven't seen the flamethrower yet. I really miss that one. That's why why I really really dig the version for the C64, where you start with the flamethrower as your secondary uh, weapon. But it was removed. But they kept the bazooka and the grenades, of course. Why did they do this? I have no clue. I have no clue. This version also features two additional levels uh, that were not included in the um, arcade version. And that was an airport where the player faces a group of rocket soldiers and a new final stage set inside enemy's base in which the player must uh, disarm nuclear missile attack that's about to be launched at any second they also um, replaced yeah they did so they replaced the flamethrower corp also at the end of the warehouse stage to um, paratroopers that's about it now on with the trailer until next time bye <laughs> Konami.